Coors Field in Denver, Colorado, the AL West leading Houston Astros look to close out a four-game sweep of the Rockies. Colin McHugh seeks the winning ways again as the Strohs try to further their dominance in interleague play. Hi, everybody. Alan Ashby and Jeff Blum with you. Last night, the Astros pick up the win in game one of this brief two-game set. And Brett Oberholzer went to the mound, pitched very well for the ball club. Your thoughts about Obi last night? I thought he did a fantastic job. If they can find that Obi from 2013 that we saw last night, last couple starts have been fantastic. Good changeup, had a game plan, but the execution was excellent for me. Obi was really good. You can't do it, though, without the offense, and the home runs have made up such a big part of the offense for this club. Yeah, check out the distribution. This is through the batting order where those home runs are coming from, and a pretty even distribution all the way throughout. And we do know that this lineup has shifted quite a bit with some of the injuries, Jed Lowry going down, and some of the movement with George Springer moving to the top of that lineup. Carlos Correa now in that mix in the second hole. But these guys are going to drive the ball out of the ballpark. 95 home runs as a team. And last night we had a chance to see four here. Carlos Correa got the fireworks started with that fastball. And team, teams are still trying to figure out a weakness from this young man. And right now that inside corner is not it. Finally a home run from that starting uh, lineup from Preston Tucker getting in there. Got himself a changeup. Hit in that happy spot out there in that Coors bullpen. And Jake Marisnik drove this ball deep into the night. 422 feet to center field. Got himself a fastball after showing the bunt. And we know how the celebration goes after that in the dugout for these guys. But then Chris Carter got beat on a couple fastballs and a big-time mistake with the hanging breaking ball in the zone to a guy like Chris Carter, and that's what's going to happen. So you got the ball club playing well. Any uh, surprise at all that Carlos Correa happens to be on the ball club as part of this Maybe turnaround once again for the club. No, I think he has a lot to do with this turnaround. We saw it with George Springer last year when he came up, provided a spark. But I think this is a little bit different situation. Obviously, that prospect status that comes with Carlos Correa puts a target on him a little bit. But he stepped up those last three games, eight hits, a couple bombs. But he's driving and runs. This guy is more refined than I think I've ever seen any rookie who's come up in the major leagues. Coming up, the Astros are finding strength in numbers as they find confidence throughout the batting order right here at Coors Field. Can they slice through the Rocky Mountain air and sweep the series from Colorado? We'll find out in just a few minutes.
your low fare right now at southwest.com. Coming up, there's no doubt the catalyst in the Astros' winning formula has been George Springer, and he's getting even better as the weather heats up. Just how good has he been? Julia gives us the answer when we come back. away series the Astros looking to sweep the Rockies this season and George Springer will be the first one to step up to the plate tonight leading off again for the Houston Astros like he's done in 22 other games this year this will be the 23rd he's reached base safely in all but one of those games obviously responding well AJ Hinch loves him in that role he's our lows never stop improving he's really impressed us this year uh, obviously we saw what he could do last year but man he's gotten hot here recently riding a 10 game hitting streak and he extended that last night in the first inning uh, leading things off with a single but he's been getting on base in many different ways of course you see the power the home runs continue for George Springer now with 10 on the season but last night like I said three for five with an RBI so he's driving in runs when he can too he's doing a little bit of everything but June has been red hot for the outfielder take a look at the numbers April May and then June uh, jumping up to a 406 batting average so stay hot George Springer the OVP up there too he ranks third in the AL in OVP this month continuing to draw those walks uh, it's a big reason why he's in that leadoff spot for AJ Hinch who loves his his quality at bats that he's been taking a lot lately and hey Car Carlos Correa is hitting behind him right now really compliment him complimenting him last night saying that his at bats kind of changed the way uh, or Springer being on base most of the time changed the way that Carlos Correa's at bats go just consistently on base with a threat to steal as well uh, and now I'm going to send it up to the guys in the booth Ash and Blum how are you guys seeing Springer as the leadoff guy play out yeah hi Julia uh, it's it's been just downright impressive and, and watching him kind of change his game around from that big free swinger to now a guy that is making contact shooting it up the middle and to right field getting on base utilizing his speed and occasionally hitting the long ball um, is very very impressive for me I just think it's a unique dynamic to have a guy that should be that power guy at the top of the order I think it, it frustrates some of these pitchers they got to face somebody of his caliber to immediately start out a game makes it interesting to them but like you guys said he is on base consistently in the minor leagues he was stealing 45 plus bags so he's a threat in every aspect of the game and you talk about every aspect of the game talk about that defensive side we have just seen him make gem after gem in right field he can really throw an exceptional all-around ball player 
So the Astros set to work it here this afternoon. The Astros come into play in first place in the American League West. There are two and a half games in front of the second place Texas Rangers. The Angels five and a half back followed by Seattle and Oakland. The Astros have won four consecutive games as they now take on these Rockies who are in a bit of a, a scuffle. They've lost three in a row and seven of eight. So A.J. Hinch and the guys maybe have the edge on their side as Colin McHugh goes to the mound. Of course, the Astros following today's game move on to Seattle. Three games with the Mariners and then close out the road trip with three games in Anaheim against the Angels. So a lot of intra-division baseball coming up and the Astros have been very good while playing in the American League West. Today's Astros starting lineup is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. George Springer again in that top spot. He's in right field, followed by shortstop Carlos Correa. He is a huge difference maker. Preston Tucker homered in last night's game. He's in left. Middle three in the order, Chris Carter at first, at third base, Luis Valbuena, and Jason Castro is behind the dish at the bottom three. Home run hitting Jake Morisnik. Marwin Gonzalez is at second, and Colin McHugh on the hill. For the Colorado Rockies, right-hander David Hale, 27-year-old, making his fifth start of the season. See those numbers? Pretty good whip. Left-hander's hitting 300 off him. He is 5 and 2 with a 2.97 ERA in 12 major league starts. Fastball, slider, changeup. Average around 91 miles an hour, but he's got a pretty low batting average against that fastball. Hitter's only hitting a buck 94 against that heater off of David Hale. So Hale gets it loose as the throw goes down to second base. So we're just moments from getting started here. The Astros have dominated the Rockies, taking the first three games, two in Houston. And last night's game against these Rockies, four home runs for the Astros. They now have 95 to lead the major leagues and well out in front in that regard, especially in the American League. George Springer has 10 of those bombs on the year, 274 the batting average, three hits in last night's game for George, and a 10 game hitting streak in tow. And our first pitch of the afternoon. Springer fouls it straight back to the screen. So the Astros playing very good baseball now right on the heels of losing seven straight and all six games of the previous road trip. Tough to turn it around like that but they have done it. A ball and a strike on George. There was a good crowd on hand last night. I believe 33,000 plus. Today will not likely meet that figure, but it's starting to fill in. Two and one the count. Umpires for today's game. David Rackley behind the plate. The crew chief Jerry Lane at first. At second, Hunter Wendelstead and Bob Davidson is calling the box down at third. Springer a good swing fouls it back. Usually starting pitchers have to combat with the leadoff man that they're just worried about getting on base. But you got to worry about George Springer leading off with a bomb. Line drive back up the middle. There goes George Springer again. Starts it with a base hit to center field. An 11 game hitting streak. And that's exactly what the Astros won in this first inning. Good piece of hitting. A lot of people are going to say maybe turn and burn on that, try and launch that ball. But I think with where Springer's at right now, he's more focused on getting on base, and this is how he's doing it. A lot of base hits, line drives up the middle. So he's pushed that batting average up to 278, and he continues rising. Great speed at first base. The Astros lead the league in stolen bases. Well, the club, 53 stolen bases. They've been caught 16 times. Springer with a good lead. As Carlos Correa stands in, he's hit in four straight. And he has done everything and more you could ever have hoped for when he came up to the big leagues. We had seen Carlos in spring training last couple of years. We had heard a lot of the things about Correa. 
But I think he's better than everything we had heard. He takes a strike. He is 14 for 39. Holds the all time mark now for the Astros 14 hits through his first 10 career games. Ken Caminiti had been the previous leader in that regard. That took place back in 1987. And Caminiti had 13 hits in that span. For Correa, the batting average at 359. It's went sharply to short. Tulowitzki starts the would be double play and they get it 6 4 3. So Springer's base hit to start the game erased and two outs here in the first inning. A ball hit sharply. Defense for the Colorado Rockies. Next Astro, Brandon Barnes out there in left. Blackman in center. Cargo in right. Nolan Arenado at third base. Troy Tulowitzki just turned that double play with DJ LeMayhew. Ben Paulson out at first base. Michael McHenry getting the catching duties here on this midweek day game. 72 degrees here at game time. And you'll be happy to hear this. Humidity at 58%. Ooh, and rising. Ooh. Strike is taken by the three hitter, Preston Tucker. Tucker hit one of the four home runs in last night's game, hitting 260. And now has proven that he can go deep while playing in the lineup. Of course, we joke somewhat. First two major league home runs came as a pinch hitter. This is his 101st at bat of the year. Well, he's starting to get a good peek as to what Preston Tucker can do. It's one in the air deep down the right field side and it is gone. Preston Tucker makes it one nothing Houston on his second home run of the two game series. The fourth of his career. And the Astros are at it again. Home run number 96 for the club. I thought he got jammed. Looked like that ball was off the label. Get a good look at it. A couple pitches away. They try and come into the kitchen. Does a good job of getting that barrel to it. Didn't really jump off his bat, but we have talked about it many a time here in Denver. That ball just refuses to come down once you get it elevated. Against the Colorado Rockies now, the Astros have scored in the first inning in each of the four games. I just continue to feel that Preston Tucker is one of the young guns that has a chance to make a big difference for this club. Chris Carter hits one high in the air, foul down the right field side. This place is crazy. Tough to find the baseball right now. Last six games, you see the numbers. 18 runs scored in the first inning. Ooh. And it's a great way to start a ball game. Obviously, statistically, it says you win when you score first. I'm not sure why that is. When the Astros have scored first, they are 27 and 5 on the season. Carter gets jammed and fouls it down the right side. So then you take the same ball club, the Houston Astros, 2015. When their opposition scores first, they're 12 and 23. You got any logic to that? Nope. That's the beauty in baseball is I can claim ignorance and it still works out the way it and, does. And be absolutely brilliant with that. Uh, you called it ignorance. Has anybody figured this game out? No. Every time you think you do, you're in big trouble. So you just sit back and enjoy it. Chris Carter also had one of the four home runs in last night's game. Fouls it back on the right side. Counted two and two on Chris. For Carter, the batting average at 206. He had a pair of hits last night. And
and the slider puts him away. So that'll do it for the Astros in the first inning. They get a couple of hits. Double play took care of part of that, but you couldn't stop Preston Tucker. Fourth Major League Dinger, it's 1-0 Houston. Gorgeous day today. Rain actually in the forecast a bit later this afternoon. That starting lineup for the Rockies. Charlie Blackman in the top spot, followed by second baseman D.J. LeMayhew and Troy Tulowitzki. Middle three, powerful Carlos Gonzalez. Nolan Arenado, great third baseman, and Ben Paulson gets the start at first. And the bottom three, behind the plate, Michael McHenry. In left field, former Astro Brandon Barnes and David Hale on the hill. Next Rocky, Colin McHugh on the mound for the Astros. Going to be a birthday boy tomorrow, making his 14th start. Numbers a little bit high, inflated. Had a rough outing last time. Only went three innings, giving up eight runs to Seattle. June has not been nice to him. Three starts, one and one record, 8.44 ERA. And the first pitch from Colin in for a called strike. Yeah, Colin got roughed up that last start against Seattle. Three innings, nine hits, eight runs against him. And it required 74 pitches to get through those three innings. Sliders drilled down the right field side into the corner and extra bases. Though the Rockies at it, Charlie Blackman has a leadoff double and he'll stop there as Springer gets it back. I think that was a little bit of a slider, maybe a cut fastball. Came right back into the barrel of Blackman. Turns on it. But that's the thing. With Colin McHugh at a ballpark like this, where his four-seamer might flatten out a little bit, all of his put-away pitches are pitches that spin. I mean, the slider, the curve ball, so those are going to be tough pitches to command here at this elevation. So it's going to have to be really good at executing his pitches, setting guys up, and getting that location down in the zone. So how would you advise him on a day like today? Just uh, live on the edges. He's got to keep the ball away from these guys. Keep him leaning. Keep him off balance. We saw a great job of Oberholzer. Doesn't have an overpowering fastball, but he did a good job of being aggressive in the zone and inside to some of these right-handed hitters. Colin tries to find the inside corner. 2-0 and the count. DJ LeMayhew at the plate, and he's having a fantastic season. Hitting 330. And he's hitting 364 at Coors Field. Now it's not an easy assignment coming in here as a pitcher. But as Blummer talked about. Brett Oberholzer last night very good in providing the team a shot for the win and he picked up a W in the process. Two balls and a strike. Those last five starts have been tough on Colin. Yeah. 
And now three and one. Pretty good pick. Speaking of birthdays, Jason Castro is celebrating his 28th. Nice. So Castro and Colin McHugh working it together. And a walk. So a double and a walk here in the first inning for the Rockies. As they try to get something going quickly against the Astros. Defense for the Astros. Preston Tucker in left. Jake Marisnik in center. George Springer in right. On the left side, Valbuena and Correa. On the right, Gonzalez and Carter. Jason Castro, the Astros, celebrating that 28th birthday that Ash had been talking about. Working with Colin McHugh. Brent Strom already out there talking with Colin. That might be a little concerning for some of us. Not normally do you see Brent Strom out this early in a ball game with a pitcher like Colin. You wonder how much they talked before the game as Colin warmed up. Or did Stromy just hold back in the event that the game started like this? So Tulowitzki stands in. Outstanding shortstop hitting 304 on the year, seven bombs and 34 RBIs. He was two for four in last night's game. Is it safely in all three games against the Astros? Tula with runners in scoring position, hitting 419 this year. And Colin falls behind. Over the last four months of regular season play, that dates back to August 1st of last year, McHugh has posted a 13 and 3 mark. Right on the hands and fouled back. He has been very good in limiting walks despite walking LeMayhew in the first inning. Under two per nine innings. Some smart fans. It's bright and sunny. Some clouds floating by. It's real smart because you're closer to the sun here. It's dangerous. Good 5,000 feet closer to the sun. It's only about 93 million miles away. That's it. <laughs> That's all I've got from my grammar school days, Blummer. That's that's actually pretty impressive that you retained it that long. <laughs> <laughs> Under the current conditions, right? <laughs> One and two the count. Loading up on that Kinko Biloba. <laughs> Look what it's done for Mr. King. And down on strikes to Lewitsky on the high heat. And so that's a little bit about what Jeff Blum's talking about. Maybe more fastballs. Maybe the edges of the strike zone. Well, we actually saw a good breaking ball in that sequence against Tulowitzki. You see that foot down from Tulowitzki in that two strike count, kind of hesitated with the hands, maybe looking for something off speed, but still enough on that fastball from Colin McHugh to get that strike out at the upper part of the zone. He had a lot of success pitching up there last year. It's only the second time that Colin has faced the Rockies. So one out runners at first and second cargo at the plate Carlos Gonzalez has hit in his last three all of those against the Astros. And he hit a mammoth shot to right field for a home run. That came in last night's game. Guy who's gotten off to a slow start but the Rockies are really counting on him. And Sting in the baseball. In the American League, the average on base percentage is at 314. That number has continued to slide in recent years. Cargo's right at 309, so just about the league average. McHugh a check of the runner at second and now that spin move. 
Love it. It's good. That is really going to deter S base runners. Something has got to be done about that move. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you have to at least have a, a fielder at the bag, don't you? Okay. Sure. That's my editorial. Side note. Again, the high heat. Oh, and to the count now on Carlos Gonzalez. Yeah, we've seen Astros pitchers get away with a couple of mistakes against this Rocky lineup. It's nice when you can get that swing and miss and you completely miss your spot. Take advantage of it. Now you got him 0-2. Do whatever you want with him. Colin McHugh combined with Dallas Keuchel. The pair has gone 14 and 5 on the season. Again, the foul back. Right hand came off the bat for Cargo. It's one of the more annoying things that happens as a hitter. There's Obi. Quite an effort last night for Brett Oberholzer. Did a great job. It was fun to talk to him before the game, and mentally he was locked in from the get-go. Had a game plan, executed it perfectly. Showed no fear out here in this ballpark for sure. And the 0-2. Curveball crushed the right field on a line and deep. And there it goes. Three-run first inning home run for Carlos Gonzalez. And the Rockies take the lead now in the first at 3-1. That is vintage Carlos Gonzalez. Not a bad pitch from Colin McHugh. But again, sometimes those pitches down to left-handed hitters, coming back to him a little bit on that breaking ball, off speed. Actually beat him up in the zone with a couple of fastballs. But able to get the head out on this one. Number 10 on the year for Carlos Gonzalez. So a double, a walk, then the strikeout of Tulowitzki, but Carlos Gonzalez... Makes the Astros pay in the first inning. Yeah, I'm with you. I thought that curveball was in a pretty good location. As now, Nolan Arenado stands in. If you haven't gotten the briefing, this guy is some kind of third baseman. Hits it in the air. It's Chris Carter. And now... Can't find the baseball, and eventually Marwin tries to get to it as it drops untouched. So Chris Carter, nowhere close on this pop fly. Huh. Ball sky, day game. See him shielding the eyes, no sunglasses on. But immediately a bad route. And Eric Young almost wore that right on top of his skull. <laughs> the was... only one with a clue in that entire play was Marwin. Umpire running away. Eric Young has no clue. What is going uh, on? That's circus time right there. Shots fired. I don't know if it still happens. You'd hear guys in the dugout come out with the oom papas at that point for the circus. Waiting for that Benny Hill music. 358 the batting average in day games for Nolan Arenado. You big into British broadcasting? No. Just recognize the music. Three and one. Fly ball center field. Plenty of room for Marisnik. And out number two in the first inning. Take a look at that breaking ball. Pretty good rotation on it. Starts to bite down. But again, that down and in. About knee high on that inner third. It's a good spot to hit. And he's kind of got that loop in his swing already. He's able to get under that and drive it. He's out on the line. So two outs. First baseman today is Ben Paulson. He stands in hitting 293 for the Rocks. We've talked about the Rockies offense. They're actually a good team offensively. They lead the National League with a 267 team batting average. 
Second in slugging, second in OPS. And they're third in home runs. So they'll give your pitching a tough time. Swing by Paulson a bit late as the count of a ball and a strike. The Astros overall in pitching, fourth best in the American League at 364. Bullpen has been second best in the league. Kansas City has ridden their bullpen and their offense this year to the best record percentage wise in the American League. The Astros have the most wins at 39, so trying to win their 40th already. They've lost 28 times. Two and two the count. Twenty fifth pitch for Colin coming up now. And a full count. So it's been a rough first inning. A couple of hits, a double and a home run. A walk also in the inning. Big shift on for the left hand hitter. And a second walk here in the inning, and that's very unusual for Colin McHugh. Sure is. Just the inability to locate right now with that fastball. And his splits on his pitches. 2014, he threw a fastball 40% of the time, went to that slider. It's a little skewed this year with the fastball at 31%, but I think because they put a lot of emphasis on reading that slider as a cut fastball a little bit. So I think the cut fastball gets mixed in with the slider, but the numbers against those pitches, the fastball and slider, 308 batting average against the fastball, 344 against that slider. Michael McHenry at the plate. McHenry hitting 264 and has an 0-2 count. Great cutter on that one. It's a late break on this, staying on that outer edge. As a hitter, you start your swing assuming it's going to be in one spot and then it just cuts away from you. And down on strikes three pitches. And so the second strikeout for Colin, but a first inning that is beneficial for the Rockies. They get three and lead it three to one after one. things off here in the second inning for the Astros. He leads the team in home runs with 16. Uh, got two on Tuesday right here. With 16 homers, uh, that ties a career high for him, actually.
Bradley. He had 16 last year with the Cubs, and it took him 149 games to get 16. Needed just 66 games to get there this year. Uh, last time Astro, an Astro hit 16 dingers for the first 66 was back in 2008. That was Lance Berkman. He hit 19. A.J. Hinch, though, talking about if you look at the traditional numbers with Luis Valbuena, it can be a little baffling with the batting average being much lower than where he wants it to be. Uh, he said this is a guy that we usually put at the bottom part of the order, so pitchers can't really look past him with that pop. But the swing, guys, uh, he did mention his swing, the way he swings the bat. He hits a lot of balls up in the air, which gives outfielders an opportunity to get underneath it. Uh, it's hard to hit for average that way. Thank you, Julia. It is Valbuena, Castro, and Marisnik here for the Astros in the second inning. And already trying to play catch up a bit with the Rockies striking for three in the bottom of the first. So we've seen two home runs already. Preston Tucker is fourth in the big leagues. And then Carlos Gonzalez raked the line drive three run shot to right. And his tenth of the year. Two and one the count. Talked about the Astros leading the American League West. The Rockies are not in such a favorable position. They're in last place in the National League West, where the Dodgers and Giants are setting the pace. The Dodgers, two and a half games in front of the Giants. Arizona has played pretty well. They're just a game under 500, followed by San Diego and Colorado. Colorado. San Diego is at the skids now in particular since firing their manager Bud Black. Foul ball down the left side two and two. Well you go out and make those trades there's some high expectations. Put on everybody in that Padre organization. Question is does it make a difference. When you change managers assuming that the manager. That's already in place. Is doing everything he can as Valpuena goes down on strikes. Out number one in the second. I think we both played for a lot of managers and played long enough to understand that I think a lot of the responsibility is put on the player. It just so happens that managers are the scapegoats, so to speak, and the first ones because you can't go around firing your entire outfield or firing your, you know, your bench guys or anything like that. The first guy you can really get rid of is that manager and sometimes that's how organizations find a way to send a message to those players in that dugout to turn it up a notch. Jason Castro the birthday boy stands in. Batting in the sixth spot today. He has found oh. himself in the nine spot a number of times recently for the club. Pretty special when you can share your birthday with Fabio. Jason's going to have to grow the hair out a bit. Yeah. Get the flowing locks. Maybe unbutton a couple buttons on that jersey. Sounds to me like you have plans for him. It's got a bright future. It's only 28. Been around for a while now. Yeah. So he was an all star at the age of 26. Two balls and a strike. George Springer had a base hit in the first inning. Preston Tucker hit a solo home run. And Castro waving out in front. The count evens at two and two. Take a look around. The major leagues as Castro goes down on strikes. That's three now for Hale. Two outs in the second inning. Base is empty for Jake Marisnik in the American League East. Tampa Bay with a one game lead over New York. Baltimore two games back, as well as Toronto. By the way, did you see that eight home run effort by the Orioles a couple of days ago? I did. Tough not to with the attention yeah. they put on those things when they happen. And by the way, the Boston Red Sox, nine games back in the East. That's not going to sit well in Boston. Kansas City leads in the Central. Jake Marisnik has a ground ball base hit up the middle. 
So a good time for Jake to get hot. Take advantage while you can in Colorado and see if you can get that offensive side of the game rolling once again. Two out single brings up Marwin Gonzalez. A good time for Jake to run too. Get into scoring position. Two outs. You know when the ball club broke spring training. Initially they were running like crazy. The entire team it felt like. Jake oh, a big did. part of that. Running game has slowed down a good deal. Jose Altuve. Is usually the main cog in that running game. But it's been about the long ball. It's been about the bullpen. And the starting staff. With the addition of Lance McCullers and now Vince Velasquez. Appears to be stronger and better. And again the throw over. Eleven stolen bases for Jake Marisnik caught four times. So when you size up the running game for the Astros best in the American League. It's Altuve with 17 bags. And that's a frustrated young player. 13 for George Springer 11 for Marisnik. They are the main cogs. In terms of the running game. Kidding me with the stall tactics that are going on right now? Get on the mound. I often hear the phrase slow the game down, and I wonder, is that possible? Well, they're doing it just to check replays. Still hasn't thrown a pitch to the plate to Marwin Gonzalez. It's really intriguing when you watch. What Dallas Keuchel does he shuts the running game down without throwing to first base once or twice a game. It's a big lead and Marisnik bluffs. Pop up on the right side. LeMahieu the second baseman makes the play and that'll do it for the Astros in the second inning. They leave a man the base hit by Marisnik. It's 3-1 Rockies as we go to the bottom of the second. Cleanup man Carlos Gonzalez against Colin McHugh. The Astros also have picked up their run on the long ball. Preston Tucker in the first inning, number four on the year and career for Preston Tucker. Is that 96 bombs as a team for the Houston Astros? 96 for the club. Woo. 
And they're riding high out in front of everybody else in the major leagues. Colin McHugh set to work it to the eight nine and one spots for the Rockies. Brandon Barnes. Getting a second consecutive start in left field. That takes a ball. For Barnes. 293 mark with the bat. He's been good for the Rocks and. Everybody in Houston knows how he can play defensively in the outfield. Very good center fielder. Playing in left field for the Rocks. Slider sweeps away, so it's two and one. Collins already walked two as he walked LeMay, Hugh, and Paulson in the first inning. The Astros had 96 home runs. Second best in the league is the Toronto Blue Jays at 83. And the Blue Jays are easily the best scoring team in baseball. The Baltimore Orioles, who led the American League in Dingers last year, are third at 81. So you kind of get the gist the company that the Astros are out in front of now in the league. Just the second inning. Count stays at two and two on Barnes. Pitch count is not going well for Colin McHugh this afternoon. Straight up infield on Barnes as he hits one off the end of the bat, looping into left field and drops in front of Tucker. Lead off single in the second inning, hit number three for the Rockies. Not much going right for Colin McHugh these days. Make a good pitch on a breaking ball to Carlos Gonzalez. He hammers it out. Now you make another good pitch, a two strike count, keeping that thing down right where he wants it. You see Castro going down to potentially block it, but. Just enough on it to keep it in front of the outfielders who play pretty deep here at Coors Field. Rockies are not a big running team. But as anticipated as Valbuena charges hard from the third base side. David Hale at the plate. Good close check on the signs from third base coach Stu Cole. Showing Bunn early. Rob Buena holding his ground. And now the swing induces a little perfectly laid down would be sacrifice Bunn. And so the Rockies get exactly what they wanted. Moving safely into second is Barnes on out number one. And back to the top of the order. Charlie Blackman will stand in. He's one for one with a double that he raked down the right field side. His 10th double of the year. He and DJ LeMahieu were aboard for the home run by Carlos Gonzalez. Carlos Correa playing behind the runner. Good curveball in for a called strike. With that double, Blackman now hitting 268. Eight home runs on the year for Blackman as he grounds it foul right side. And an 0 2 count. Rockies are third in the American in the National League rather in home runs. The home run by Carlos Gonzalez in the first inning the 73rd of the year for the Rocks. And when you look National League it's the Dodgers leading in that power category with 84. 
followed by the Reds and then the Rockies. So the Astros are in some rarefied air. They will go on to a couple of ballparks, Seattle and Anaheim, that don't lend to the long ball. Astros have had no problem launching out of safe co-field. That's been a good ballpark offensively for the Astros last couple of years. One out here in the second inning. And again, Blackman finds a way to foul it off. Just getting a piece. Colin McHugh doing a good job of climbing the ladder here. Trying to waste one. Keeps getting that foul ball from Blackman. 41 pitches for Colin. And again, just one out in the second inning. So the pitch count adding up quickly for Colin McHugh. And got him. Take something off on the changeup to get the strikeout. Number three already for Colin. Out number two that brings up DJ LeMayhew. Make memories with family friendly activities at every Sunday home game. Presented by Kroger. The next Sunday home game of the season is June 28th when the Astros take on the Yankees. For more information, visit Astros.com slash Sundays or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. LeMayhew drew a walk and scored on the home run in the first inning. Hitting an excellent 330 on the season. Curveball has LeMayhew out in front. That's the kind of stuff you want to have getting a guy like LeMayhew to swing the bat like that. When you look at the National League and the leaders in batting average, Paul Goldschmidt. From the Houston area out in front of everybody at 363, followed by D. Gordon, Bryce Harper, and DJ LeMayhew. So that's how good he's been. Grounds one right side, two big hops for Marwin. And they get through the second inning. As we played two, it's 3 1 Rockies. Accounting for all the scoring here this afternoon, the Astros with a solo home run from Preston Tucker. Three run shot by Carlos Gonzalez for the Rockies. And now David Hale will work it to Colin McHugh to start the third inning. George Springer and Carlos Correa will follow. So we'll see how Colin handles the bat. Backs away, takes a strike at the knees on the inside edge. Hey. 
Colin does have one major league hit. Now keep in mind he started in the National League with the Mets. Moved on to the Rockies. Had a base hit as a member of the Rockies in 2013. Lines one to right field his second major league hit and this could be extra bases. Carlos Gonzalez makes an outstanding play and McHugh decides to hold with a single. McHugh trying to do some damage out there. What a leadoff man that guy is. That's pretty solid. Fastball up. Just crush it the other way. Take a look at that opposite field stroke. You look at it. I have sized it up. <laughs> now the issue is how about the speed of Colin McHugh? Yeah, he's a one man log jam out there. George Springer at the plate. Springer one for one, lined one into center field to extend his hitting streak to 11 games. So the hit by McHugh, number four already on the afternoon for the Astros. Colin had a shot at his first major league extra base hit. Just outside on Springer. Ball and a strike. With that first inning single, Springer hitting 278. It has been rather remarkable to watch him turn things around in such an amazingly quick way. Takes a fastball at the knees. It's one and two. The month of June, 16 games played for Springer has seen him hit 406. On base percentage of 449. Grounds it up the middle and another knock. Springer two for two on the game, both times going up the middle, and he continues to make those numbers go upward. Pretty impressive what he's doing in this month. Considering how he started out, let's take a look at it. First 34 games through May 19th, 185. A lot of concern for us. We know the talent has always been inside this young man. But since then, the last 27 games hitting 374, 22 of those games out of, out of that leadoff spot, 375. On base percentage is extremely high, but that OPS out of that leadoff spot, almost 1,000. Kid is getting it done. That base hit we just watched going into center field number 28 in the month of June, his 17th game here. So, pretty fig easy to figure that he's picking up well over a hit a game. And now Carlos Correa stands in. We're in the third inning. Runners at first and second. Back to back hits by McHugh and Springer. Carlos Correa hit one sharply but grounded into a double play in the first inning. As a ball and a strike. What's crazy for me watching Carlos Correa in some of these at bats is it seems he's controlling a lot of his at bats. Taking pitches, really showing no panic. Really haven't seen him get beat by any of one pitch yet. First time the Astros have had a man in scoring position today. It's two and one on Correa. But in the three games with the Rockies, the Astros have been really good. Ten for 27 with runners in scoring position. Ground ball left side. Can they get two again? They can only get one, the force play at second base. So runners will be at the corners as Correa reaches on the fielder's choice. That Springer erased. So McHugh, the lead runner. Speed of Correa at first base. Now Preston Tucker at the plate. Hale's doing a great job of keeping that fastball down. There might be a little bit of sink to it. We really haven't seen him make a mistake out over the middle with that fastball. The pitch that Preston Tucker hit out was elevated a little bit, but still in that inner third, Preston just did a better job of turning on it. Overall on the season, talking about runners in scoring position, the Astros 
hitting 235 as Tucker takes the ball. Preston Tucker now hitting 267. A home run last night, one here today. And suddenly now a veteran in the major leagues with four bombs. 13 RBIs on the year for Preston, trying to add to that total. It's a ball and a strike. Shift on three infielders on that right side. David Hale gets a lot of ground balls. That figure has gone downward this year. Yeah, you don't want to turn into a fly ball pitcher in this ballpark, nope. that's for sure. The 1 1 instead stepping off. Preston Tucker has pulled each one of his home runs here in this two game set in Colorado. But he's a guy that can go the other way easily. Correa on the move and a ground ball right side. They will get the out at first place. Base, a run scores as Colin McHugh comes in. So it'll be an RBI ground out for Preston Tucker. Two down in the inning. And into second base is Carlos Correa. It's a one run game. 3 2 rocks. Great play by LeMayhew. Stuck that pass to diving. Paulson, but LeMayhew there. How about Paulson able to pop back up and complete that play at first base? Apparently, LeMayhew won a gold glove last year. I was not aware of that. And he's got a chance, you would think, to maybe be a silver slugger at second base this year. Two outs for Chris Carter. Carter hitting 205. Had a big home run late last night, a two run shot. See the layout right there. LeMayhew surveying the territory and able to get that throw over to Paulson to complete that. Real nice. Now ball is foul. Last year, in 135 games started, 144 overall. The Mayhew made just six errors playing at second base. It's not bad. Arenado over there at third base with another Gold Glove winner. Troy Tulowitzki at shortstop. Now a throw to third base is on the move as Correa and he's nabbed third base. So the Astros pick up a stolen base as Correa gets third. For Carlos Correa that's his second major league stolen base. Ground ball left side that's going to find a hole in the shift and produce another run RBI single Carter and the Astros are back even at three. How about that for location. Shift on Chris Carter again. High fives going around it's going to be one of those day games here at Colorado where there's going to be a lot of high five in both dugouts. But this one gets in the kitchen at Chris Carter blows him up broken bat. Just your standard ground ball to where the shortstop normally is playing. But with LeMahieu and Tulowitzki, you figure one of those guys would be able to knock that thing down. So that brings up Valbuena. Well, Luis, a strikeout victim in the second. Twelve and a half feet of human being out there wasn't able to snag that ground ball. Extended with the arms, maybe even more. Yeah. Well, Buena takes the ball. It's one and one. And again, the shift being employed. A good time for Val Buena to scoop one, launch it into this thin air. Luis leads the Astros with 16 bombs on the year.
And now two and one the count. 16 for Valbuena, 12 for Carter and Gaddis. Springer has 10. Rasmus, who's not with the ball club on that bereavement leave, he has nine. Seven for Castro. Altuve has five. And on and on. And it adds up to 96 home runs. Good swing. But a strike on the board. It's two and two now on Valbuena. David Hale brings it to the plate and got him on strike. Second time for Valbuena. And that'll do it for the Astros, but they get a pair in the third inning, and they've caught the Rocks at three. June 18, 1967. 22 year old Don Wilson strikes out Hank Aaron and finish off, finishes off his first no hitter, which is also the first shutout no hitter in franchise history and the first no hitter thrown at the Astrodome. Cameron Hank was Wilson's 15th strikeout victim on a memorable Father's Day in Houston. Good stuff. What kind of stuff did Wilson have, Ash? Alleged. Don't give me that stuff. Don't start with me that way. We're only in the third <laughs> inning now. Yeah, well, we've been here already for an hour. I Allegedly, think. mid and upper 90s at really? times. Really? Yeah. Jeez. Hard throwing right hander. You're punching out Hammer and Hank with the fastball. You better be bringing it. Here for the Rockies in the third inning. Troy Tulowitzki, Carlos Gonzalez, and Nolan Arenado right in the heart of this order. Tulowitzki struck out in the first. Well, and McHugh has struck out three through the first couple of innings. Colin gets ahead. That's advisable. A lot of hitters now taking pitches as Tulo lines one into right field. So he's one for two, leads it off in the third inning with a base hit. That brings up Carlos Gonzalez. Colin McHugh's just having one of those stretches. Astros did a good job of getting him back in the ball game, tying this thing up. But you immediately have to go back out there and face Tulowitzki, Cargo, Nolan Arenado. It's not easy these days for Colin. And we've seen him have to grind through some wins leading into this month of June for him also. It was Cargo with the three run home run in the first inning his 10th on the year. And it was a line shot that got out in a hurry. Twenty seven RBIs now for the Rockies right fielder.
Shift on in the infield. Big swing as Gonzalez fouls it back. Kind of hard for me to understand why Cargo is hitting 247. Yeah, he's healthy. He should be raking. You look at this Rockies lineup, it's not a team that's easy to get through. Again, a big swing, fouling it back. One and two the count. Rockies have lost three straight. They've lost seven of their last eight. And Walt Weiss, skipper of the Rockies, trying to find a way to get it turned around. Always a battle for the skippers. Gargo lays off the high pitch. And calling it 91. That's 50 pitches now for McHugh. Again, tries to go up the ladder and has it run full three and two. We'll see if Tulowitzki's on the move. Carter's doing a good job of laying off that high fastball. I'm sure somewhere in their reports they're seeing that Colin likes to climb that ladder, get that punch out. We've seen it a couple times today. Colin's high water mark for pitch count this year, 111. That was June 2nd against Baltimore. Tulowitzki does not go, and again the pitch is up. So it's a walk putting runners at first and second. Nobody out for Arenado. Arenado flied out to center field in the first inning. One of the secrets around Major League Baseball. This guy can really play. And McHugh in a jam, bunting Arenado, bunts it foul. That'd be doing the Astros a favor. Yeah, I agree. It's illegal to bunt in Coors Field unless you're a pitcher, isn't it? If it's not, it maybe should be. Arenado had hits in each of the last two ball games against the Astros. Has five in the three previous games against Houston. All wins for the Astros. Taking takes a strike at the bottom of the knees. Oh, and to the count. Right there at the bottom of the knees. Arenado has a five game hitting streak. Popped up, but to the seats on the left side. So it stays at 0 and 2. I'm sorry, go ahead. He's a tough out with runners in scoring position. 429 on the season. That is 51st RBI in last night's game. Ooh. And the 0-2 once again. Breaking ball got him. So Colin McHugh is picking up some strikeouts. That's number four. First out of the third inning. And it brings up first baseman Ben Paulson. If you're not a guy that bunts on a normal everyday basis, so to speak, you, you're giving away a strike. You're, you're shortening that at bat by Arenado bunting in that first pitch of this at bat. So you can see how 
McHugh creates the torque on that breaking ball. Did a good job of getting that late bite down. But I just don't understand why you would want to do that as a as a hitter like Arenado take a strike away from yourself. And again, when you're talking Arenado, one of the leaders in the National League in RBIs. So I agree with you. A break for the Astros. Yeah. Arenado came into that at bat hitting 429 with runners in scoring position, third best in the National League. Well, back it's 0 and 2 now on Paulson. Paulson drew a walk in the first. Since May 19th, Paulson's been a hot hitter. Hitting 293. It was May 19th that saw Paulson called up from Triple A Albuquerque, and now down on strikes. Back-to-back -back punch outs in the third. Five on the afternoon for McHugh, and with two down now, runner still at first and second for Michael McHenry. McHugh showing signs of recovery after that leadoff hit to Tulo. Cargo followed that up with a walk. But a nice luxury if you have it to be able to strike guys out with runners in scoring position. We talked about him climbing the ladder, and here he gets a swing and miss. Fifty-nine pitches for Colin. Starts McHenry with the breaking ball, misses. McHenry struck out in the first inning. That was the second of the five recorded by Colin McHugh. And this should get Colin McHugh out of the inning. Towering fly ball left center. Tucker is there and puts it away. And so Colin McHugh battles out of a third inning that saw a leadoff single followed by a walk. We play three. It's a 3 3 game. Each team with a home run Preston Tucker a solo job for the Astros in the first inning. It was a three run shot by Carlos Gonzalez for the Rockies in that same first inning. That gave at the time the Rockies a 3 1 lead. The Astros struck for a pair in the third. And have caught him we go to the fourth inning Jason Castro the birthday boy will lead it off. Followed by Jake Marisnik and Marwin Gonzalez.
Nice work by McHugh getting out of that inning. Sets up nicely. Give the Astros a shot, maybe take the lead. Changeup dips down and away, gets the swing. Castro struck out in the second. David Hale has struck out four. And now 0 and 2 the count. Big day in sports. Opening day of the U.S. Open. It is. Basketball's over. Hockey's over. Now it's just major this weekend for the PGA. And nothing but baseball. It's game number 68 for Houston. And what a, an outstanding start the Astros have gotten themselves off to. Again, leading the American League West. 39 and 28 are the Astros. Two and a half games in front of a red hot Texas Rangers club. Two and two the count on Castro. The Astros have been in first place in the division for 64 days now. And they've held the division lead since April 19th. They've been as high as seven games in front in the division, but that's tightened up. Castro down on strikes a second time. They'll record the out at first base. Five strikeouts for Hale, one out here in the fourth inning. Seems like Hale is picking on Castro. He's getting a steady diet of sinkers off that outer edge and then just change up after change up. One out for Jake Marisnik, who's singled in the second. 247 that batting average and five home runs. Number five came last night, center field style. Slider stays in. It's 0 and 2. Lays off the slider again. The most recent home run prior to last night's for Marisnik came back on June 7th. That at Toronto. So Marisnik is down on strikes. That's six now for Hale. Create memories, have fun, and enjoy a premium experience with an Astros luxury suite at Minute Maid Park. Create an experience you're sure to remember by calling the Astros premium ticket line at 1-877-9-ASTROS and reserve your luxury suite today. That was my luxury voice. It's a good one, too. Nice, right? Good time to be in the shade watching a ball game, too. Marwin Gonzalez popped to second base in the second inning. Marwin hitting 215. It's time to get hot. Filling in for Jose Altuve, who last night just did not run well enough down the first base line a couple of times. Hamstrings are terrible. They just linger. And if you re injure them, it just oh. sets you back forever. Hot shot up the middle. That is into center field. So Marwin has a base hit. And for the Astros, number seven on the day. Two out single brings up Colin McHugh, and that's a big hit for that reason. Yep. I was just thinking the same exact thing. Get McHugh up there. You either turn the lineup over, but if McHugh makes that third out, you're okay with it because the leadoff man comes up next inning. Good job of letting that ball travel and get deep. Sometimes it's all right to get jammed. Sneak one through there. Tulo almost able to get to that ball. So a two out single, seven hits for Houston. Colin McHugh had one of those hits in the third inning and scored the second Houston run. Colin adeptly let the baseball get deep as he lined it to right field. 
He didn't sound like he meant to do that. Oh, I think he did. <laughs> we talked hitting before the game. He meant to swing. I know that. Takes a slider at the knees. 0 and 2 the count. This is starting to look like one of those at bats where the manager says just take three. Not sure that that would be the case for Colin McHugh, who has proven he can hit major league hit pitching. One and two the count. Back to back sliders to McHugh, all kinds of respect. He is now two for 15 lifetime in the major leagues. Both singles. Three sliders in a row. Woo. David Hale e either has a scouting report on Colin McHugh is a very good hitter or he's trying to pump up those strikeout numbers. Colin McRake. That's a good name. And there it is. A little more pitcher like for Colin McHugh. Seven strikeouts for Hale. Three and a half have been played. It's a 3 3 tie. Call one astros or visit Astros.com. It's part of the daily routine here at Coors Field. 15 minutes before first pitch, a clubhouse attendant and an MLB authenticator go inside the humidor and pick out the baseballs that will be used for that day. Well, here I am, and here it is. It's the humidor in all of its glory. It's down here. looks exactly like the beer cooler that's sitting right next to it. We're down in the tunnel. It was placed down here in 2002 in an effort to keep the balls from traveling so far in this high altitude. Keeps the balls moist in there, maybe softer off the bat. Of course, a little bit easier for the pitchers to grip the ball as well. They wouldn't let me inside, guys, but I'm guessing it feels like Houston on a nice summer day, don't you think? Yeah, I imagine so. I, I wish... Julia could have gotten in there and seen exactly what they're storing in there. Yeah, but she couldn't get clearance. Clearance. I have not changed my name officially. <laughs> gotta get in there. We gotta infiltrate. We gotta go Mission Impossible on that thing. Bottom of the fourth inning, three, three, three tie, Astros and Rockies. Eight, nine, and one coming up. Brandon Barnes leads it off. Had a base hit in the second. Colin McHugh has struck out five, but David Hale of the Rockies has struck out seven. Barnes with that base hit pushes the batting average over 300. He's at 301 as he stands in. Jake Marisnik in center shading toward right a bit. And now 3 0 the count. Is there a combination to get in that thing, Julia? Would hate to get stuck in there. Your skin wouldn't dry out. 
Three and one the count. Yeah, but humidity is not good for my hair. It's always that to consider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's about priorities. You have to find the right product to be able to hang out in there. Priority is to throw a strike. It's three and two now. Brandon Barnes leading off the fourth. Do you suppose? You think they've got more than baseballs in there? Is there something we don't know about? Maybe a cedar plank to keep the moths out? I don't know. What else do you want to store in a humidor? A couple of Cuban cigars? <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> That's probably not good for cigars. Just missing is Colin McHugh. Lead off walk to Barnes. And that's four walks now issued by Colin McHugh. It's actually a pretty good pitch. Brandon Barnes walked away like this was a for sure ball, but we get a second look at it. Caught that inside corner pretty good. Brent Strom was out there to the mound in the first inning. Colin had yielded three runs on the three run bomb by Carlos Gonzalez. But he's tightened it up since. Bunt on the first base side by the pitcher Hale. It's a perfect sacrifice bunt as Barnes moves into second. One out and now the top of the order. Down on that field, Ash. You notice anything odd? I see uh, no shift on. The only shifting you're going to see is Hunter Wimblestead out there at second base. There's only three umpires. Bob ah, Davidson yes. has left the game because of dehydration. The odds, the odds of box right now from Las Vegas have gone way down. Yeah, those odds have been altered quite a bit without him here. Charlie Blackman, one for two on the day, a double and a strikeout. I wonder if Bob Davidson's a big U.S. Open fan. <laughs> Not a bad move. That would be a salty veteran move for sure. Be back in the seventh, guys. Colin McHugh working deliberately here in the fourth inning. Has a 2 0 count on Charlie Blackman. DJ LeMayhew, Troy Tulowitzki, Carlos Gonzalez, Nolan Arenado to follow. Tough lineup at the top for the Rocks. They thin out considerably at the bottom of the order, at least in today's order. That was a good backdoor slider from Colin McHugh. He'd like to be able to throw a couple more of those. Two and zero oh. came out of nowhere with that pitch. That was nice. And now two and two the count. Blackman way out in front. A deliberate pace once again. In recent games for the Astros, the pace has slowed down quite a bit. Right on the fist, it's fouled off. Great pitch. The Blackman is just annoying to Colin McHugh. He's doing a good job of fighting those pitches off, extending these at bats. Trying to find a way to polish off Charlie Blackman. And he's down on strikes. Foul tip hung on to by Castro. Two outs in the inning. Six strikeouts for Colin. Did a good job working outside, inside, see the location on these pitches, but that highlighted number five was up and in. Got the foul tip. 
but then goes immediately away on that backdoor little cut piece to swing and miss. Good, good location, good setup. And now the assignment is to get DJ LeMahieu, who's hitting 329. He's walked and scored in the first and grounded out 0 for 1 on the day. Curveball bends low. Kind of a unique setup on defense for DJ LeMahieu, too. He goes to the right field area quite a bit. Almost to the point where you'd almost think about moving everybody over there and kind of doing a reverse shift because with the right handed hitter up there, it's odd to see Carlos Correa almost playing up the middle. So it looks like a semi shift on a left hand hitter. Strike catches the inside edge, a ball and a strike. Get the sense that Colin is really battling it today, but he's pitched well. Trying to keep it there. One big swing by the Rockies. Ground ball back to the hill. Nice defense as he'll get the out, and that'll do it for the Rockies in the fourth inning. No runs. There was a leadoff walk. He's stranded. Through four, it's a 3 3 game. Couple of knocks going back up the middle. Really thriving out of that leadoff spot. We saw some massive numbers earlier in the game, hitting well over 375 now. Just real comfortable, good at bat, seeing the ball quite a bit. Check out his spray chart. You can add two more hits to that center field spot, up to 16. But that just tells you the kid's got a good idea of the strike zone up there, has a great game plan. He's been sticking to it here in recent days, and it's starting to pay off. Batting average jumping 281 right now. It was about a month ago that George Springer was saying there are no hits up the middle. I think he's changed that. It's the first pitch high in the air to left field, easy for Barnes. And he'll make the catch. One pitch, one out here in the fifth. Well, the reason George was saying this is because the teams that we were playing at the time were all shifting him incredibly. There was always somebody standing right behind second base where those hits. We're nowhere to be found, but I think now with that spray chart you just saw, he's starting to spray the ball all over the place. Can't play that shift necessarily on George Springer anymore. Yeah, what he did was then start getting a lot of hits to right field, as yep. you're saying, and changed everything. One out for Correa. He's 0 for 2 on the day, but has scored a run, reached on a fielder's choice in the third inning, and scored on Chris Carter's base hit. The 1 0 is inside. Correa hit a bomb in last night's game. First inning as he launched one to left field. Goodness. These two guys have torn up the Rockies. I imagine they're going to say good riddance to the Astros when they leave town this afternoon. 
By the way the Rockies are just one for nine with runners in scoring position today. The Astros have had not nearly as many opportunities three and they're one for three. Three and one the count. Home run number four. I'm good for it. This could be a good one. Carlos Correa has played in nine major league games, has three home runs, seven RBIs. Started the day hitting 359 and now draws a walk. Let's check in with Julia. Thanks, Ash. Preston Tucker comes to the plate now, uh, hitting his fourth home run of the season in the first inning. That's following up yesterday when he got his third home run, uh, the first one not in a pinch hit situation. He said, yeah, my home runs kind of come in bunches. They always have. Uh, this is definitely one of those good times for Preston as we've seen two in two games. But he talked about the confidence of this offense yesterday in that game with four home runs for the team. And he said, we knew the conditions coming to this ballpark. We've heard how this ballpark plays, very offensive ballpark. And, and we just had a little bit, I hate using the word swagger, but it's the word that they say, guys. I don't say it as cool as they do. But there is some kind of swagger uh, when they walked up to the plate yesterday and today. Julia always talks about swag. She doesn't like to say the full <laughs> word, but I'm just surprised she didn't hashtag it. She does normally, right? Yeah, I know. Let's we'll see if there's a little more swag here in the inning. Tucker's driven in a pair. One for two on the day. And again, that first inning solo home run, number four on his career. Doesn't look at all like his brother, who is now in the fold with the Astros, Kyle Tucker. Pretty amazing when you start hearing the name Ted Williams mentioned when you're talking about a guy coming out of high school as a left handed hitter. <laughs> I was going to say, is that good or bad? It can be dangerous, can it? Ooh. But it's very impressive in that that's what people kind of think when they see the kid. He's tall and slender. Well, did you see the hacks he was taking in the cage? No, I, I, I actually did not. Did you see him? Yeah. And the, the swing, I don't know what. It was just the swing. It was a side angle. I didn't see where the ball was going, but the video that I saw was just a side swing, and it was eerily reminiscent of a Ted Williams type swing. Little uppercut and yep. and that lanky frame that you're talking yeah. about. Well, I think it's the lanky frame and, and maybe the swing that you're talking about that have led some people to well, bring up the, the name Ted Williams. Well, it was for me, it was that load position that Ted would get into. That's what, that was a that was where the real similarity for me was. There goes the runner Correa into second base. His second stolen base on the afternoon, and now three in the major leagues for Correa. He's in scoring position. Three and zero oh the count on Tucker as Chris Carter waits on deck. Can't fall asleep on those Astros when they're on the base paths. Picked a good pitch to run on too. When he stole a bag in the third inning, it was third base that he picked. Talking about Coors Field and, and what Preston Tucker was saying about coming in here. These are MLB ranks and overall offense when they take they factor in to some of the stats around the league and overall offense. This place is number one home runs number one triples number one. It's amazing what you can do in this ballpark just because of the elevation. You can humidor all you want. Ball's still going to take off. Still say it would be good for your skin. Tucker drills a 3 0 down the right field side and extra bases. Correa will score easily. An RBI double for Preston Tucker, third ribby of the day, and the Astros take the 4 3 lead. AJ Hinge giving some of these rookies a 3 0 swing aways. Taking advantage of it. Good place to do it, too. Chances increased greatly to get that fastball. Put a lot of faith in these guys at taking good passes at good pitches. Tucker did just that right now. So 15 RBIs on the year now for Preston Tucker. Meeting at the mound. 
as the pitching coach goes out. That is Steve Foster. And so they break up the meeting. Chris Carter is one for two with an RBI single in the third inning. Still nobody throwing in the Rockies pen. Both guys on the hill have really had to battle it this afternoon. What has been laborious for the guys on the mound this afternoon here in Coors Field. Drill down the left field side. That's going to produce another run. Extra bases for Carter. As Preston Tucker scores, it's 5 3 Houston. RBI double Chris Carter. And the Astros are putting it together here in the fifth inning. They just look a little sick and tired of taking those fastballs. Now they're jumping on those fastballs early in the count. I'm sure Foster came out and said, You've got to try and start getting ahead of some of these hitters. But the Astro hitters being aggressive in the zone with these fastballs. Doing a good job of lacing them down both lines now. Back to back doubles, back to back RBI doubles. That's what you like to see is a manager and hitting coach. See those guys trading places at second base. Trading places is the term I was thinking about. And that's what teams will talk about offensively a lot. That pop fly finds the seats as Valbuena fouls it off. 0 for 2 for Luis. A couple of strikeouts today. For Chris Carter, the double his ninth. And the RBI for Chris, his second of the day, 35 now on the year. Oh, and to the count on Valbuena. He's having a tough time in that slider down and in. For the Rockies now, they get a right hander up. Christian Bergman is throwing in their pen. Nine Houston hits now. The Rockies have just four. One of those, a big three run dinger. There's a soft liner that's dunking into right field. Base hit. Carter had a very late read on it and only gets to third. That's three consecutive hits. Four straight hitters have reached here in the fifth inning. And now the Astros suddenly have turned that one for three day with runners in scoring position into four for six. I'll tell you what, Valpoina drops that bat. And he's extremely proud of when he makes contact. That was a terrible pitch from Hale, though. Leaving that thing up out over the plate. Allowing him to get that bat head out. It's a good thing to be happy. I made contact. Boom. <laughs> so Valbuena one for three. Jason Castro has also struck out a couple of times today. Takes a strike. Well, did you see the pen flip on the scorecard I just gave right there? Yes, I did. Right out of the corner of my eye. I mean, that was a solid 1B I just wrote down, and I dropped it. Look, I want to tell you my peripheral vision is still very good. It's it the is. straightforward stuff that's not that good. <laughs> Castro falls behind 0 and 2. We're in the fifth inning and the Astros trying to take over once again. They've won the first three in the series. Astros proving those numbers right. Getting a feel for what Hale's throwing up there. Taking advantage of some of these situations. The Astros taking a shot at their 40th win of the year. has a good swing fouls it back for Jason the batting average at 224 now it's 89 pitches now for Hale
Castro had two hits in yesterday's game, went two for three. Also drew a walk. Hey, come out and play on your birthday. It's not the right way to be treated, striking out your first couple of times. I can't remember what I did on my birthday. Did you have a yep. in season birthday? Well, yes, I did, but. Uh, I don't remember doing anything spectacular on mine. Not sure any of my teammates ever chose to celebrate my birthday. Towards the end of my career, they did. Calling me Viejo and Grandpa and <laughs> Old Man. I think Bud Norris actually got me a walker one year, man. Is that right? Yeah, he got me good. Had the tennis balls on the bottom and everything. I mean, it was pretty legit. What'd you get for Bud on his birthday? Um, a beer. Maybe after the game, I don't know. I talked to him that day. That would be a good one. Befriended him. So Castro is down on strikes third time today. That's two out in the fifth inning. And now brings up Jake Marisnik. Yeah, I think those uh, those gifts might be fitting. <laughs> yeah, but he's not getting the birthday treatment from Hale. Castro isn't. Just gifted him the golden sombrero. Well, he's got the sombrero. He doesn't ha have it quite golden yet. But going for the hat trick. Jake Marisnik is one for two, a single and a strikeout. Eight strikeouts by Hale, and yet he trails 5 3 here in the fifth inning. Nick whips and has a 1 1 count. The best record in Major League Baseball, of course, the St. Louis Cardinals, who are a rather insane 43 and 22 as we speak. That after losing yesterday. Right on the hands of Marisnik. It's 1 and 2. Cardinals have a five game lead over the Pirates in the National League Central. Cubby seven back. And the Reds and Brewers are just passing time. And Marisnik down on strikes. That's nine for Hale. We've played four and a half, five three Houston. Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at Geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. 
pretty good crowd on hand here this afternoon. 5 3 Astros lead over the Rockies, and they've out hit them 10 to 4. Preston Tucker with the solo home run. Carlos Correa has scored a pair, a couple of stolen bases for Carlos. Cargo, Carlos Gonzalez, a three run dinger for the Rockies, has accounted for all of their scoring. That back in the first inning. And now Colin McHugh in a position to maybe pick up a win today. Trying to get through the fifth inning. Facing the three, four, five spots for the Rocks. Troy Tulawiski leads it off. Three Astros hitters already today with multiple hits. George Springer has a pair, Preston Tucker, and Chris Carter each with a pair. Tucker three RBIs on the day, while Carter is driven in two. Oh, and to the count on Tulowitzki. Struck out and singled on the day against Colin McHugh. Latroy Hawkins continues throwing in the Rockies pen. So it would appear that he will come on for the sixth inning. Likely David Hale done with his day's work. Ground ball right side. Marwin's there and makes the play out number one. Back to that third inning. Started off with the base hit to walk, but he came back, did a great job getting Arenado to swing and miss at that breaking ball. Right here. Seen this a lot from Colin McHugh over the last couple of years. Getting into that two strike count, throwing that rising fastball, getting the swing and miss. Cargo's really the only guy that has laid off that a little bit, but he's done a good job of setting up other hitters to get that punch out. Six on the afternoon. And now Carlo, Carlos Gonzalez at the plate. Well spotted fastball at the knees at 92. Great pitch. That's about the top end velocity we saw last year from Colin McHugh. Sure is. Times he made it look like 95. Little looper down the left side. Val Buena on the run and can't get there as it drops foul. And the count at 0 and 2 on Cargo. He is homered and walked. The last hit against Colin McHugh came off the bat of Tulowitzki in the third inning. He has walked a pair since, and he's walked four on the afternoon, so it hasn't been super sharp. But it goes a long way in explaining the pitch count right now. Does that. Pitch count at 83 for Colin. 55 strikes, 28 balls. And another strikeout as he gets Carlos Gonzalez. And that's seven now for McHugh. Beat him with that high heater. Finally got him to chase. Good job. McHugh aggressive with the fastball in this at bat against Cargo. Good job of elevating. Even if he doesn't swing at it, sets up maybe the next pitch, but gets him to chase. And now with two outs, bases empty. Nolan Arenado at the plate. Flied out and struck out. Bends the curveball in for a strike. Yeah, maybe right now, for me, wondering what Brent Strom might have said back in the first inning. As he went out to the mound following the home run by Carlos Gonzalez. Fly ball to right. George Springer has a tough sun field to deal with and makes the catch a 1 2 3 fifth inning. That's the first time this afternoon that McHugh has gotten through at 1 2 3. 5 3 Houston.
Ball to the bullpen. It's going to be Latroy Hawkins. Making his 11th appearance. Ex teammate, ex Astro. All around good guy. Throws hard, fastball. About 92, 94 miles an hour. Got a good change up. 1,011 appearances in the major leagues on the mound. Is that good? I guess rookie year was 1995. Calculates to around 20 years in the show. I think he's got one more appearance than I had hits in the big leagues. Impressive stuff. Big and numbers. Actually, that probably wasn't a great way to point out how well Latroy Hawkins has done. Marwin Gonzalez leads off here in the sixth inning. The Astros picked up a run in the first. That on the Preston Tucker solo home run. Two more in the third, two in the fifth inning. Rockies with all three of theirs in the first inning on the cargo three run dinger. Latroy Hawkins brings his first offering, finds the strike zone. 92. He still got it. Detroit had 11 saves for the Houston Astros in 2009. He's 125 on his career. Marwan has a base hit in two at bats. He's hit safely in his last four now. It was 1995 when Latroy Hawkins first came into the big leagues that with Minnesota. Pitched in six games all as a starter that year. Little chopper back to the hill. And an easy first out of the inning. Played with the twins through 2003. Onto the Cubs. Giants, Baltimore, Colorado, Yankees, Houston, Milwaukee, the Angels, Mets, and back to the Rockies. He's got a few suitcases in his closet. And now Colin McHugh. Got a big base hit in the third inning as it turned out. Led off the frame, lining one down the right field side, and scored the second Houston run. He has looked a lot more pitcher like since. That was a pretty good pass. For a pitcher. The Troy Hawkins with the 1 1. And that's foul back. So 1 and 2. McHugh can look up to the scoreboard and see a 250 mark for his batting average. Strike three called. Second time that McHugh has struck out today. That's 10 strikeouts of Houston hitters. So they've got 10 hits and 10 strikeouts. And that's a pair of numbers they've put up a number of times this year. Two outs, bases empty for George Springer. And now the second baseman. LeMayhew moves fairly close to right straight up the middle as Springer's hit a couple of balls through the heart of the infield. 11 game hitting streak for Springer. He's two for three on the day. 279 the batting average. Takes a strike. Maybe a pitch that he could have shot through the right side. Could have gone with it. It almost looks as if George is trying to launch on the first couple swings until he gets to two strikes and then kind of breaks it down a little bit and tries to shoot it back up the middle the other way. See if he does it right here. They try to go up the ladder. 96. 
And Hawkins is going to retire at the end, end of this season. You never know. Still some life in that arm. No kidding. 42 years of age, and still bringing it. Little choppers foul. One and two. It remains. There you go. And now we're getting silly, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Carlos you know predates what? him. If Latroy's watching, I mean, if he gets a copy of this, he's going to be giving me a call. <laughs> I did not do this, Latroy. It's credit to how long you've played, man. And you'll say it's good hearing, hearing from you. So Springer down on strikes, a pair in the inning, 11 on the afternoon for Houston hitters. But through five and a half, the Astros lead at 5 3. To retake the lead for the second base all star starting position for the American League. Make Houston proud and vote Altuve now at Astros.com slash vote. Colin McHugh back out for the six, who said he had mixed emotions when he arrived at Coors Field. Uh, some tough times when he was with the Rockies in 2013. Was kind of a blip on his radar. He, sees, he says it feels like it wasn't even real uh, a short time with him. Like I said, you mentioned his birthday was tomorrow. He was actually traded to the Rockies from the Mets on his birthday two years ago. Uh, so we're. we're up to that anniversary but when he looks back at that year he played for five different teams struggled with the Mets uh, and struggled with the Rockies moving all over the place he, he moved from the rotation to the bullpen just a really trying year for Colin even blogged about it uh, so good stuff on his blog if you ever have a chance to catch that but he said through that year he wouldn't change anything just because of all the things that he learned and how much appreci appreciation he has for this game and appreciation he has for the Houston Astros to count on him every fifth day. Thank you Julia pretty amazing stuff when you look at what Colin did in 2013 with the Rockies as he brings the strike one and one the count on first baseman Ben Paulson who has walked and struck out pitched in four games that was it 19 innings but he allowed 33 hits and 21 earned runs and ERA at 995 almost at the 10 mark and yet he has become a solid major league pitcher. Six seven eight for the Rockies here in the sixth inning. Just a real credit to Collins process. And the kind of human being he is. A lot of people just melt down and go away. He decided to fight make the adjustments and here he is. Breaking ball foul back. Imagine there are some evaluators who somewhere along the line have said, you know, I had no idea. Oh, I'm sure. Two 
2 2 pitch misses and kicks off the glove of Castro. So it's filled 3 and 2. And you would certainly want to avoid this, what would be fifth walk for Colin on the afternoon. Just four hits for the Rockies against McHugh. And down on strikes is Paulson. And that's eight now for Colin. Ninety three pitches very likely the final inning that Colin will pitch today. He's got one out faces the catcher Michael McHenry. It's a good spot for him to finish out to six hitter Ben Paulson punching out. See him getting on the side a little more emphasis on that middle finger creates that. Almost slider rotation get a little bit of cut. And you've got McHenry hitting seventh Brandon Barnes hitting eighth. That bottom part of the order should be a good time for Colin McHugh to battle through. And it'd be surprising to me, considering what we saw early on from Colin McHugh, to see him get this far into this ballgame. Ball's behind two and all on McHenry, who has struck out and flied out. Spins one a bit and a fly ball to left field as Tucker moves back and under. And makes the catch. Two down in the sixth inning. Collins at 96 pitches. If he can get a quick third out, any chance you would send him back out there? No, I think uh, if he gets out of here maybe with 100 pitches, that, that's, that's a lot of high stress pitches being thrown in that amount. Of for me. And granted he's pitched a lot better in these last couple innings but. I think that they can squeeze six innings out of Colin McHugh I think they'd be quite happy with that. Really, and really haven't abused that bullpen here in the last five or six games either so those guys are pretty well rested. Certainly helps when you get good starting pitching Tony Sip. is starting to get loose for the Astros. So you would figure that Sip is slated to pitch the seventh. Eight hitter Brandon Barnes at the plate has a 2 0 count. There are times for Colin when the fastball and the strike zone don't get along, and he'll come with a little cutter. You got McHenry on that pitch. It's two and one. If you can come to Colorado and take a couple of ball games in two opportunities, you've done very well. Get out of town and feel awfully good about it. And have your starters go into this, finish six strong. Fred Oberholzer last night. He's all in today. Third. Yeah, this is great. Bullpens fear coming in here just because they don't know how these games are going to unfold. Scott Oberg is a right hander throwing in the pen now for the Rockies. They also have a left hander up and throwing. Rafael Enoa is waiting on deck. He would pinch hit for the pitcher spot. It's a 3 2 count on Brandon Barnes. Boone Logan is the left hander throwing in the pen. A two out walk has Barnes aboard. And now we know it will come to the plate as a pinch hitter. And represents the tying run. Brandon Barnes has reached all three plate appearances today. A couple of walks in a single. Five walks on the day for Colin. And he had not walked more than two in any start on the year as Brent Strom comes to the mound. Six different times Colin had walked two this year. Never more. And 
now five this afternoon. But when it's all said and done I think as you say Blummer it's got a chance to be. A very impressive battling day for Colin McHugh he's got one more big out to get. Well if he gets through this it qualifies for that quality start. Brent Strom was going out there to give him a breather let him know that this might be his last hitter. On the day. And also a little miniature scouting report. On Inoa who's coming in as a pinch hitter, just a little bit of a refresher. So Inoa the pinch hitter. Has a man aboard the Rockies two runs down. And still with just four hits against Colin McHugh. Colin misses low. Preston Tucker in left field was moving at the last moment toward the line. And still checking with that third base dugout, trying to find out where they want him. It's a 1 1 count. Got a little benefit right there. McHugh. Brings the 1 1. Throws the curveball and a weak swing there by Noah. The counted 1 and 2. Nice job by Castro. Great job by Castro. Better job by McHugh throwing that good firm curveball down. So does the breaking ball bite in this thin air in Denver? Well, I think the way McHugh throws it creates pretty good rotation. Brings the one two. Tries to catch the outside edge. When the Astros score four or more runs, they're 33 and three. They've put five on the board. When they score first, they're 27 and five. They scored one in the first inning. The choppers foul. You know it taking some unusual hacks. They don't look comfortable, that's for sure. The 2-2. Out right on the fist popped up left side is their room. Castro comes over and there is not room. won last night's game eight to four and trying to pick another to take all four meetings between the two clubs on the season. Back at home the Astros were six three winners and also eight five over the Rockies. You know it gets a piece and stays alive. Even with that seven game skid for the Astros over their last 20 games they're nine and eleven. So if you can take the really rough times and still kind of balance it out. Serve yourself awfully well. They're 15 and 15 over their last 30. And now three and two. So another dangerous count could be the last man that Colin McHugh gets a chance to face with the left hand hitting Charlie Blackman do up next. Tony Sip loosening in the pen. And Colin takes a little time, goes to the back of the mound. The Astros trying to improve to eight and one in interleague play. One loss coming to the Giants. Runner goes, and again, just getting a piece as Enoa. You 
as a pinch hitter. You know, is hitting 280. Overall, 243. And now the tenth pitch of this at bat coming up. And you keep in mind that Colin just walked Brandon Barnes. Fly ball center field. Should be easy for Marisnik. He makes the catch, and that'll do it. Colin McHugh works his way through the sixth inning and leaves a man. Through six, Astros on top, 5-3. Ball game doing a great job. Follow the Astros all season with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Carlos Correa early in his career swinging a hot bat. Pitcher's trying to figure out where to find that hole, but you can see he's kind of hitting the ball all over the place. They've tried to up and in. Beat him with the single there. Tried to get in the kitchen last night with that green dot on that inside corner off the edge. He turned that into a bomb. But still doing a good job showing great plate coverage, good plate discipline. Not a fearful hitter at this level this early in his career. And now it's 28-year-old Justin Miller on the mound. As he brings his first pitch, foul back. Carlos Correa not getting cheated. It's the first time we've actually seen him swing that early in the count in a first pitch. Yeah, the standard has been take a first strike. Got an 0 for 2 going today. He scored a pair of runs, stolen two bases, nabbing third and then second. On the hands, that's a fair ball down the line. Extra bases for Carlos Correa. He's around second base with a big turn as he forces the throw in. Carlos Correa. Was going to try to take three if possible. Instead, lead off double here in the seventh inning. Third double now on his brief tenure in the big leagues. How does he keep that ball fair? You or I would have turbo hooked that thing right at Gary Pettis down there, but he decides to sneak it inside that third baseline for a double. I'd have fouled it off quickly. Oh, I'm telling you, I would have cleared out the Astros dugout. He's got three doubles, three home runs already. Three stolen bases. You sound like you're expecting more out of the young man. I'm just taking it in, and it's oh. been quite a pleasure. It's a good thing Bob Davidson wasn't on the diamond there. This move is, is just getting ridiculous. It's a great look at it, too. That, that, that was a hanging slider on the inner third, maybe off the plate on the inside corner and still able to keep that thing fair. That was impressive. So Correa at second base. They're going to try to keep him close to the bag with Preston Tucker at the plate. Preston fouls it off the left side. Tucker's had a nice day. 
Solo home run in the first inning that gave the Astros that one nothing lead we talked about. He grounded out to drive in a run in the third inning and then played it a run with a double in the fifth inning. That double already number 10 for Preston. You ready for something interesting. Oh please. Astros have punched out 10 plus times in this game. Yes. They've done that in nine games. We've got 10 plus hits in this game. Yes. They've done that in nine games. That leads all of Major League Baseball. 10 yeah. strikeouts, 10 hits. That was a number I had seen reading along somewhere, and I couldn't remember the exact number, but it's yeah, impressive. That, that combination of 10 hits and 10 strikeouts plus. Fly ball left field. Tucker got jammed. Barnes under toward the line makes the catch. That's the first out in the seventh. So still in scoring position at second is Correa. One out for Chris Carter. And Carter is having a day. Two for three, a single and a double. He's driven in two. 35 ribbies on the year for Chris. Luis Valbuena waits on deck. And first base is open. They'll face Carter. Got to take your chances, don't you, if you're the Colorado Rockies? I know that Chris Carter has prodigious pop. But still at the same time. He's proven beatable. Average at 212 now. Well for the Rockies they're set up with a righty on the hill. And you would figure that they would try to go after Carter. Don't know that they would walk Valbuena. And now 0 and 2 the count on Chris. When it comes to strikeouts. The Astros have added 11 today. Start a play 610 so that means 621 right now. And that's last in the league. But it apparently is just a part of who they are. They slam the baseball. They've scored a lot of runs. They run the bases very well. Carter gets jammed and fouls it. Plenty of season left. Yes, there is. The Astros now, by the way, 13th in batting average, so they've been moving up a bit. Yeah, you notice that about the schedule. It's number 68 today. Now we're in the 90s. Surprise! The next closest club in terms of most strikeouts this year. <laughs> Did you see the catcher just dive to catch that pitch? That was awesome. And Carter didn't move a whole lot. The Seattle Mariners have struck out the second most. <laughs> you know what happens? You get caught with the umpire wrapped around you, and. It can be really tough. Start battling that left knee of the umpire that's wrapped around you. Two and two the count. So the Astros started the day with 66 more strikeouts than the Mariners, the next nearest club in terms of most strikeouts. It down the left field side, hooking down the line, and goes foul. Carter in a bid for a third hit and a third RBI on the day. But the Astros are in the top half of the American League in runs scored, or runs per game. 
Toronto leads easily. They're a full run better than the next best Texas Rangers. It's Toronto, Texas, Baltimore, Yankees, A's, Royals, and then Houston. That's your upper division. Correa bouncing around out at second base. Really doesn't need to steal third in this situation. Base hit. Correa's got enough speed. The outfield's playing deep enough. He's going to score easy on a base hit. And now a spin move to second base. But he's doing a heck of a job of taking the attention away from Chris Carter, maybe distracting Miller a little bit. Is the pacing of these games starting to feel like recent years when it was getting about as lengthy as it could get? There goes Correa. Pitch is inside. The throw to third, not in time. And Correa with his third bag of the day and the second time that he's gotten third base. So we talked about all the stolen bases, 18 in the minor leagues this year, and Correa is loosening up the legs. It's going pretty quick. It's a, such a tough play for a third baseman. Got a big right-handed hitter up there. Now you got to cover third base. Meanwhile, trying to hold your ground in case the ball's hit at you. It's a pretty good job of just fouling that off for Chris Carter. Talking about a lot of these offensive numbers for the Astros and comparing around the league. The Astros are fourth best in OPS around the American League. Toronto, Detroit, Baltimore, and Houston. Carter takes a strike on the breaking ball. Caught looking second out of the inning. That's 12 strikeouts now. And it brings up Valbuena trying to plate that run from third. And now the skip is going to come out for these Colorado Rockies. And we'll see how they play it. Walt Weiss. Slow in approaching the mound. And he'll take the baseball. So that'll do it for Miller. They'll go to their bullpen. Bring in the lefty Boone Logan. As he jogs it in. And the Astros continue to lead it here. 5-3. Home game is one dollar hot dog Wednesday presented by Nolan Ryan Beef, and the next dollar dog feast is Wednesday, July first, when the Astros take on the Royals. For more information, visit astros.com/dollardogs or call one eight seven seven nine Astros. Yes. Thank you, Julia. Moon Logan, the left-hander, comes on now with two outs. Correa at third base, Luis Valbuena at the plate, and a shift on for the Rockies.
fourth Rocky pitcher of the afternoon. Takes a slider in there. Valbuena has struck out twice and then singled in the fifth inning. Boone Logan has allowed 21 hits in 21 plus innings. And 11 Ernie's against him. That stacks up as a 464 ERA. Ball and strike. And now two and one. Jason Castro waits on deck. Seven strikeouts have been accumulated by the five, six, seven spots for the Astros. Yeah, it doesn't look good on a scorecard, does it? Really loading it up. We're in the seventh inning, 12 strikeouts already, and now two and two the count on Valbuena. Boone Logan has been a strikeout pitcher though 26 punch outs in the 21 innings mentioned. He led the American League in appearances back in 2012 pitching with the Yankees at the time. Pitched in 80 games that year. And Valbuena down on strikes third time this afternoon. And that'll do it. Correa stranded at third base. We played six and a half. Five three Strohs on top. Performance is brought to you by Kubota. Paul McHugh. He's got himself an interesting line. Six innings pitched, three runs allowed. Those were in the first inning off that big swing from Carlos Gonzalez, but managed to just give up three more hits in that six innings pitch. Three of those earned runs, five walks. Interesting how he scattered those, pitched around those. The Colorado Rockies, one for nine with runners in scoring position. So pitching out of a lot of jams, throwing a lot of pitches. Also accumulated eight strikeouts in that appearance for Colin McHugh. Wasn't pretty, but definitely got the job done. Qualifies for a quality start. Now he's going to turn it over to the bullpen. Yeah, I think that sums it up. Wasn't pretty, but very impressive having watched everything that went on. Tony Sip picks it up now. As he works in the seventh inning to the top of the order, left hand hitting Charlie Blackman will start things against Sip. And you can see left handers hitting just 211 against Tony. Each of the last six appearances, Tony Sip has allowed a run. I think we're set to go here in the seventh. 
Blackman settles in. Valbuena draws in on the left side. Carter draws up a bit on the right. And even the second baseman, Marwin Gonzalez, has shallowed up a bit. Ball pumped through at 92. A ball and a strike on Blackman. He has doubled his 10th of the year and scored in the first inning. Since then, has struck out twice. Lemayhew and Tulowitzki here in the seventh inning for the Rockies. This is Sips man right here. Looks like Josh Fields out there getting loose. Big right handers hitting behind Blackman. There you go. Two two count. Still just four hits for Colorado, eleven for the Astros. The Astros trying to extend a winning streak to five if they can win it today. If they turn that trick, they will have won six of seven. That right on the heels of seven consecutive losses. And that started by beating Felix Hernandez with Seattle. By ball to left field. Tucker is there. And out number one. We'll see. AJ Hinch has not started out of the Astros dugout yet. Right hand hitting DJ LeMayhew at the plate. So it appears that Sip will face LeMayhew. Next left handed hitters behind Tulowitzki, Carlos Gonzalez. That may be the thinking. Try to see if you could get through the seventh inning and keep the left hander on in the event that Cargo comes to the plate. Sip falls behind 1 0. Oh. The Astros have hit home runs this year. They're 31 and 16. And of course, Preston Tucker has gone yard today. Two and all the count. Swing by LeMayhew. Two and one. Two, three, make that 328, the batting average for LeMayhew. We saw the average sip against lefties is 211, against right handers, 174. So, some pretty good logic to stay on and face the righties. Well, if you're going to take chances left on right, Sip might be your guy. And LeMayhew does have three home runs on the year, but still not as much of a power threat as the guys behind him. Three one is pumped in for a strike, so that fills it. Tony Sip must wear the most uncomfortable jersey ever made. I happen to, with others, ride back on a train, I believe it was in Oakland, with Tony Sip on the same train. And he must have been wearing that same uncomfortable garment at that point because that whole nature of, of kind of flinching around just goes on and on. 
You get him on the hill, though, he has been so effective. Absolutely. It was a nice pickup last year. Last year, 50 innings for the Astros, 28 hits allowed. <laughs> and that was just fantastic stuff. He's actually shaved his ERA by a little over a full run this year from last year, but I would say his effective pitching last year was extremely good. Looper down the right field side. Springer coming on and dives to make the play. Another great play by George Springer. It's the second out in the seventh inning. This guy can play some D. Such a good athlete. And the Astros coaching staff puts these guys in such good positions to be able to make these plays and utilize that talent they have. Playing shallow on LeMayhew, the right-handed hitter, tries to drop one out there, but George Springer is saying no way. And no how. Two down, base is empty for Tulowitzki. One for three on the day, had a third inning single. Tulo backs away, takes down and in. So Tony Sipp trying to get through this seventh inning. And if he does so in getting Tulowitzki, you would think he would likely stay on to face Cargo at least to start the eighth. Be a real good idea. Still have Thatcher out there in the bullpen, also left handed. Ball and strike. Do you think Tony Sipp appreciates George Springer in right field at all at this moment? And throughout yes. the course of this year. Oh boy, and of course <laughs> you go back to that play that first week of the season in Arlington. The would-be grand slam that Springer went up and over to bring back. And the Astros on a home run by Hank Conger won that ball game. Line shot into left center field. Nobody is there. Getting over quickly, Marisnik and gets it back in. It's a long single for Tulowitzki. And now that brings up Carlos Gonzalez. Second hit on the day for Tulo. Ball smashed by Tulo, but great job by Marizna to cut that off and keep him at first base. Brent Strom comes out. It was just a pitch up in the zone. Good hitter like Tulo is going to be able to get on top, barrel that nice line drive to center, but the ability of Marizna to get over there and cut that thing off, still have that force play in play at second base is kind of nice. That's a big moment in the ball game. Brent Strom and A.J. Hinch want to make sure they've got everything communicated. Carlos Gonzalez hitting 245. He's one for two. He's walked, but back in the first inning, hammered a line drive, three run home run to right field, his 10th bomb of the year. Shift on for the Astros defense. And here we go in the bottom of the seventh inning. This game is shortly going to hit three hours. And the first pitch from Sip is taken low. Interesting to see the approach Sip takes on Cargo. Last at bat, Cargo punched out when McHugh threw a couple of good fastballs on the inner third, then went up top, got the swing and miss. Tony Sip has a pretty good fastball for being a left hander, also has a good slider. Carlos Gonzalez has hit just 154 against Southpaws this year. And all of his home runs have come against righties. Grounds it foul. A ball and a strike to Cargo. Pretty good fastball. Tied him up a little bit.
Outfield shaded just a bit toward left field. Very powerful left hand hitter. And a ground ball to the right side. Marwin's right there, and that does it in the seventh inning. So Tony Sipp gets through it, gives up a hit, and leaves a man through seven. It's 5 3 Houston. Rockies great Todd Helton hitting at Coors Field he said Is Coors Field a good park to hit in yeah so are Wrigley Field and Camden Yards I didn't design Coors Field I just play there well, I guess that's true but this ballpark no secret it plays offensively and the Houston Astros were hoping to take advantage of that while they were here and I say they were doing that so far uh, but this ballpark compared to others if you look at this graphic right here. Of course, we, we looked at the graphic earlier. It was number one offensively. Uh, it's 117. So the average is 100 runs there. For every 100, 100 runs, of course, field 117 runs. So, of course, it's first there. But Low Five Park in Arlington, uh, number two, Minute Maid Park, tied for 16th air right there at the average 100. Uh, guys, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's dead on. I think Coors Field is probably where every hitter in the major leagues Probably most wants to come and get a chance to swing the bat. And that man did it well here. Todd Helton. Is he a Hall of Famer? Uh, yeah. Castro hits one down the left field side and dropping and drops fair. Extra bases for Jason. He's got a birthday double here in the eighth inning. One for four as he stands there. And the Astros trying to add to this 5-3 lead. A nice salvage on a rough day that's been for Jason Castro fighting off a fastball. He finally gets something up in the zone a little bit. Double number nine for Jason. Jake Marisnik at the plate. And this could be one of those at bats where Jake has the assignment to just make sure he moves up Castro. Obert and the bunt and it's a good one on the first base side. They'll get the out and a sacrifice bunt for Jake Marisnik as moving into third is Jason Castro. One out a man 90 feet away and that would be a big run to extend the lead to three runs. Marisnik doesn't look too happy. This is actually a fantastic bunt. If he does if Ober doesn't pick this up barehanded. Create all kinds of issues out there at first base. See Marisnik stretching out right there. Kind of comes out. Ooh, did he grab that left hamstring? This altitude is not treating the hamstrings of the Houston Astros very nicely at all. You hope everything's fine there with Jake Marisnik. Marwin Gonzalez now at the plate. Infield drawn in for the Rockies. 
Scott Oberg on the hill. And the rookie misses away. The Astros have Domingo Santana waiting on deck. That's the pitcher spot. That Nishek is throwing in the pen. Marwin on the day, one for three. As a 2 0 count. is really dragging 5 3 Astros lead 12 hits on the day for Houston and now 3 and 0 the count to Marwin Gonzalez so Domingo Santana could find himself in a big situation for Houston. And ball four. Runners at the corners. One out. And Domingo Santana will come to the plate as the pinch hitter. No, base runners have gotten out in this game, and it's become extremely methodical on both sides. Trying to figure out how to get out of some of these jams right now. First and third, Domingo Santana with the pinch hit opportunity here. We've seen this situation first and third one out. Maybe a bunt towards that first base side. The safety squeeze. You've got Jason Castro. He's no slouch. That third base can run a little bit even though he's a catcher. Don't be that way. <laughs> what you're reading into things now. You, you have not watched when food is served. <laughs> Swinging and missing is Santana. Who picked up that first major league hit recently? And really a big one to get the monkey off his back. Yeah, he desperately needed that. Oh, and won the count. Ball on a strike. This is just the second game now for Santana this season. And that one hit came against these Rockies on the recent homestand. Last year a rough one 0 for 17 was Santana with the bat and now throwing to first. Signs continue from third base coach Gary Pettis. Could there be a squeeze of some sort? Curious 1-1. One, one. Maybe if the count gets to 2-1, you might have an opportunity even to try the safety squeeze or maybe even put the runner in motion, give a little hit and run, move the defense around a little bit. Top home run hitting team in Major League Baseball. And they just have not felt the need for the squeeze this year. You got to look at the personnel you're working with too. Domingo Santana you talked about just got his first base hit had a tough time making contact last year. Now might be a good time to maybe move that defense around a little bit give him a good swing because right now you should get a fastball in the zone. And he hits it in the air deep to the gap in right center field. Watch this at the wall. See ya. Three run pinch hit home run for Domingo Santana. His first long ball in the big leagues. And it comes on his second major league hit. And the Astros extend their lead now to eight to three. Sure, you got the right Domingo Santana? I'm going to check the back of the uni right now. My goodness, lucky number 13 on the back of Santana. He's a different human being this year. 2 1 count. Gets a hanging breaking ball and pummels this thing into that, look at that nose down, barrel on it, stays through it. 
That's the Domingo we had been hearing about. It's the guy in the minor leagues that had really been putting up great numbers. And now George Springer bats. Man, that's great to see because Domingo, was, for me, was the one guy that desperately needed some confidence. Very different ball game right now than it was just moments ago. 8-3 Houston. That's 13 hits. And the second bomb of the day by the Astros. The other by one of the kids, Preston Tucker. And what it looked like in the dugout. Oh, my gosh. They know the situation that young man was in. Contributing to a first-place team now. Three-run Jimmy Jack. Wow. Springer fouls it off. Counted one and two on George. No, we came into this ballpark, and you were talking to me, not on air, about how the ball carries to right field. That's the way to go in this yard. And the Astros have steadily gone that way. Carlos Correa jacked one to left field, but everything else to right and right center, even center. It's a beautiful thing. Smiles. Got to love it. They have gauged that to be 404 feet. Right now, Domingo Santana could not care less about it. I think the weight of the world is, oh, has come off his shoulders. You can see it in that smile. Isn't that the truth? 14 strikeouts in 17 official at-bats last year. Wow. That was a tough year to take, I'm sure. Oh. Scott Oberg has come on and yielded three here in the inning, and the only out he's got was on the sacrifice bunt by Marisnik. And now he gets a second as he strikes out Springer. Second time for Springer to strike out today. Two outs for Carlos Correa. What a feeling. First big league hit just recently. Now you get that first big league home run in a big spot. What a relief for that young man. Correa takes a strike. Carlos is one for three on the day. Also has drawn a walk. He scored a pair. He's stolen three. And he takes another strike. 0 and 2 the count. Yeah, it feels good, doesn't it? Oh, drink it in, Domingo. Can be a really cruel game, and then it can be just as wonderful as it gets. He may have to go out there and play some outfield, depending on how Jake Marisnik is feeling down in that dugout, too. Yeah, that's a good point. Colby Rasmus not with the club. Oh, man. He's going to be racking up some minutes and text messages tonight, isn't he? Carlos Correa on the series, 9 for 17. Talking about the overall four-game series between these two clubs. Yeah, you think uh, family members and friends <laughs> might hear about this? The other good thing about hitting that first home run here is you hit it into the bullpen. There's a good chance you're going to get that yeah. baseball back, too. Yeah, that's a good point. Big rip by Correa. With that swing, you can understand why Major League Baseball is saying that the ball comes off his bat right there with the very best in the game. Talking about Correa. That ball was not carrying. Twenty seven times the Astros have hit two plus home runs in a game. And you would figure you'll win when you hit a pair of home runs. Took four home runs last night to finally get it done. Two more today, 97 on the year for the Major League leading team. Nishak is what would appear to be entirely loose in the Astros pen. And he will come on to work the bottom of the eighth inning. 
Nolan Arenado will start things for the Rockies. Paid attendance today, 30,770. Nice crowd on a day game. But I'm sure a very disappointed crowd right about now. How about everybody on this stat sheet that has an Astro uniform on has hit a home run in the big leagues. Mm. Domingo Santana was the last guy with a zero in that home run column. And he's only been here for four at bats. He's two for four now. He's one for one, I believe, as a pinch hitter. Joggernaut. So Correa down on strikes. And that'll do it in the inning, but three big runs, and they all came on that swing. To three on that Domingo Santana home run. First big league bomb for that young man, and there he is. He's out there. Springer is going to move to center field. Domingo Santana will take over in right field. Jake Marisnik, we saw him pull up on that sacrifice bunt. Kind of tugged at that left hamstring. Hopefully it's just a little bit of a tweak, maybe a cramp. But nonetheless, Domingo gets to hit the bomb now, play some defense. Pat Nishek on the hill, third pitcher of the afternoon for the Astros. And the Astros with that five run lead now in the eighth inning. He'll face Arenado, Paulson, and McHenry, and starts it with a strike. Nolan Arenado 0 for 3 on the day with a strikeout. Ball hammered to the gap in left center field and dropping. Springer will cut it off, but not be, and then drop it. Arenado into second base. He would have been there anyway. It's a double to start the eighth inning against Nishek. Time now for the what a burger, what a play. We'll give a little bit of a flashback to April 13th. Sip on the mound, bases juice. Springer showing the athleticism, darting back, jumping, taking away what would have been a game-winning grand slam. And today, drop shot off of LeMahieu's that George Springer said not today. Flew to foot right fielder comes diving in. Now move to center field. Pure athlete out there. Nobody out. Arenado aboard at second. And Ben Paulson at the plate. 0 for 2. A couple of strikeouts. He's also walked. Paulson hitting 286. Just checking on George Springer. This is the first time he has been in the outfield, not in right field this year. 
guy that we saw a lot in center field last year and really is a center fielder but now in this gathering of a bunch of center fielders George has been the right fielder and Colby Rasmus is still on the bereavement list coming back tomorrow is my understanding and down on strikes is Paulson a big first out in the eighth inning. It's nine strikeouts for Houston pitching. One out for Michael McHenry the catcher. McHenry 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Infield plays straight up as Nishak brings a strike. Eight runs, 13 hits for the Strohs. Three runs, six hits for the Rockies. No errors on the game. Big swing and a miss. It's 0 and 2. Nishak rushing it up there, 93. Drop down and bring some fumes. It's impressive that he can create that velocity on that delivery. Oh, and to the count. And down on strikes. McHenry goes back to back with Paulson. Two outs in the inning. Arenado still at second base. Brandon Barnes will step in. The Astros are yet to get Barnes in the afternoon. He has singled and walked a pair of times. Last two punch outs from Nishek on Paulson McHenry. It's borderline abuse what he did to him. Barnes stands in hitting 301. They've got a pinch hitter waiting on deck, Willine Rosario. Nishek trying to get through this eighth inning and preserve the five run lead. Two big Houston home runs today. Preston Tucker in the first inning, a solo job, and then it was pinch hitter Domingo Santana with a three run bomb to right center field in the eighth inning. And that separated the game. It was 5 3 at the time, it is now 8 3. That one will be back in the seats. One and two now on Barnes. Nishak back on the rubber. This is outside. San Diego Padres have beaten the Oakland A's in Oakland today, so the A's go down. 3-1 the final there. Ian Kennedy defeated Kendall Graveman. Barnes gets a piece. Little payback for Derek Norse with San Diego hitting his eighth home run. Former Oakland A. Those revenge ABs are always good. LA Angels have beaten Arizona 7 to 1. So the Angels start the day five and a half back of the Astros for the moment, five games back. C.J. Wilson picked up his fifth win.
So the Angels play a pretty good baseball. Barnes fouls another one. It stays at two and two. But the Angels are just one game over 500, 34 and 33. With a win today, the Astros could get back to 12 games over the 500 mark. Philadelphia defeated Baltimore 2 to 1. Minnesota 2 1 winner over St. Louis. Hey. Jason Castro and Pat Neshek thought they had strike three. Well, there were about nine guys in orange jerseys on that field that thought that that was a strikeout. One guy, David Rackley, didn't agree. Just barely. Do over. So it's three and two now on Brandon Barnes. And he draws the walk. Third time today that Barnes has coaxed a walk. Runners at first and second. And now the pinch hitter comes to the plate. For the Rockies, Willeen Rosario has grabbed a bat. Watch Nishek. A little disappointed in the strike zone. Lead off double in the inning couple of strikeouts and then the walk to Barnes. And now Rosario. Hitting 266. We're in the eighth inning eight three Astros on top. Ground ball up the middle. That's a base hit. So Rosario comes through as a pinch hitter. The Rockies will get a run and have runners at first and third still out or rather still two outs and back to the top of the order. Nishek disappointed not getting the strikeout on Brandon Barnes. And Jerry Lane's Explaining to Nishek, maybe calm down a little bit. Brent Strom's going to go out there, try and calm him down. Just a ground ball getting through. Base hit RBI. Nobody wants to have those earned runs put on you, but still, even veterans have to regroup every once in a while when they know that they're getting squeezed a little bit. Now's one of those moments, and that's what makes Brent Strom good. Makes Jason Castro good also. Go out there, calm him down. Pat Nishek's probably going Stromy. What more can I do? I'm, I'm executing pitches. Guys are fouling them off, and I finally paint an outside corner. I can't get a call. Well, Stromy done with his message. Yeah, Pat Nishek didn't look like he was ready to just sit and listen and say, You're right. It's a frustrated man on the mound. Well, we always talk about hitters being greedy, going out there and trying to get that second, third, fourth hit. The same way with pitchers. They don't want to give up any runs. They don't feel that they should ever give up any runs. That's their mindset when they go out there. And I've got no problem with him being upset for giving up that hit and run. And for the Astros bullpen, that's been pretty true. Second best ERA as a group in the league. The strike. Charlie Blackman at the plate. One for four on the day. That one came over three hours ago. A double back in the first inning. Ball and a strike on Blackman. Seven hits now for the Rockies. Pretty impressive with that entire mess that Colin McHugh battled through that he only gave up four hits. And now one and two on Blackman. Now Colin McHugh six innings four hits three runs they were earned. Five walks and eight strikeouts unusual line. <laughs> but that unusual line comes at Coors Field, and I think you always take a little different look at those numbers. 
Tony Sip worked one scoreless inning and now Nishek just get mentally prepared for a grind on that mound. Almost hit Blackman. McHugh threw 112 pitches in those six innings also. 72 were strikes. Kind of hard to figure the five walks mixed in. <laughs> Eight to four the score. Change up hit in the air left center field. Tucker gets there he'll make the catch. So the change gets the final out of the eighth inning. The Rockies put a run on board. They're a bit closer. It's 8 4 Houston. Our TXU power player of the game is Preston Tucker. First hit bat for Preston. Got some cheese up in the zone. Turned on it. Launched it. Fourth home run of his early career. Stepped right back in there. Got a fastball down. Turned on it. That one was for a double. Drove in Carlos Correa with that. Got himself a pretty good afternoon. Two for four home run double. RBI in first three plate appearances. Got himself an RBI ground out also on the afternoon. So Preston Tucker will lead off here in the ninth inning. And the Rockies bring on right hander Christian Bergman to work it. Just called up today. Seems to be on that uh, commuter going. To and from Albuquerque. Only pitched one game down there in three innings. Pitch right back up here. Half swing by Tucker. It's a strike. The Astros have just kept putting runs on the board today. One in the first, two in the third, two in the fifth, three more in the eighth inning as they've mounted the eight runs they put on the board. Rockies with three in the first. They started fast. But the only other run they've scored, that Singleton in the bottom of the eighth inning. One and two now on Preston Tucker. Tucker's two for four on the day. Three RBIs. He now has 15. The first hit of the bunch. A home run is fourth now in the big leagues, but down on strikes here as he starts the ninth. And that's 16 strikeouts now of Astros hitters. But if you can win a game when you strike out 16 plus times, you better feel pretty good about it. Chris Carter at the plate. He's had a nice day. A couple of strikeouts, but he's also singled and doubled. Driving into 35 ribbies now for Chris.
And the Carter double his ninth. Sure be nice to see him break out and go on a similar run that he had last year. Well, he's got a chance as he goes to Seattle. He's been so good there the last couple of years. Right on the hands, slowly grounded to third base. Arenado with the play on the run. Two outs in the ninth. It'll bring up Luis Valbuena. When you look at strikeouts for the Astros hitters today, you just go down the list. Two for Springer. Correa has punched out once. Preston Tucker, this one in the ninth inning, the first time for him. Carter a pair. Three for Valbuena. And it kind of goes right on through the order. Two for Marisnik. Colin McHugh even struck out twice. Now Buena offers on the high heat at 92. It's 0 2. Shift on for Luis. I see more and more teams just try to stay up in the strike zone on Valbuena. As you look to the bottom of the ninth inning for the Rockies, it's 2 3 4 coming up. And that sets them up quite well. LeMayhew, Tulowitzki, Gonzalez, if they go further, Arenado. So a tough part of the order. How about who's getting loose out there coming in that ninth inning? Is that Fields? That is Josh Fields. Technically not a save situation, but here in Colorado it pretty, pretty much is. And Valbuena down on strikes. Fourth time today. A 1 2 3 ninth inning for Bergman. To the bottom of the ninth we go. The Astros trying to hold on to this 8 4 lead. Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare right now at southwest.com. Looking good here in Denver. A beautiful day. Back back to back gorgeous days. Wouldn't be too bad to head over there after the game. It's a beautiful downtown as well. I'm at the golf course. We could go get about nine holes in before they pack up that bird. Let's do it. I'm in. 8 4 Astros lead and trying to make it four straight over the Rockies in their only four meetings of the year. Now Josh Fields on for the ninth. Doing a fantastic job here of late. Saw him last night, went two thirds of an inning, only threw three pitches. Again, not a safe situation, but here in Colorado, it's being a 
There's a lot being asked of Josh Fields to head through this part of the order. Two, three, four. DJ LeMahieu leads it off, hitting 326. Tulowitzki and Cargo follow. And the first pitch in for a strike. Fields, the fourth pitcher of the day for the Astros. It's been McHugh, Sip, Neshek, and now Fields. The Rockies have used six pitchers on the day. Oh, and to the count. As you look ahead for the Astros to Seattle, Lance McCullers goes tomorrow night, three and one with that two ERA against the youngster Rowan S. Elias. Dallas Keiko pitches the Saturday game against Taiwan Walker. And then it's Vince Velasquez back on the hill again against Jay Happ. So you hope that part of the rotation can provide some innings, give this bullpen a little bit of relief. Man, if you're going into a short three game series, that's not a bad way to line it up for the Houston Astros. McCullers, Keiko, Velasquez. How do you like the two power arms surrounding Keiko? I love it. I think it's great. And then you got to look at how it matches up, too, with the Seattle Mariners rotation. I know they lit up King Felix, but still, to, have, to be able to avoid him is a good thing. Yeah. Gattis Evan is Gattis. looking forward to getting back into the American League ballpark too. Losing the DH here in these two games in Denver, tough to take. Did get a pinch hit at bat yesterday. Still 0-2 now on LeMahieu. And he gets a piece again. 95 on the gas from Fields. Every out precious in this game. Breaking ball just missing. Again, the Astros trying to get to 12 games over 500. Well, that last pitch was close. Stingy on the corners. Two and two the count. A win today for Houston would make them 40 and 28. It'll provide a five game winning streak. It will make them eight and one in interleague play. And it'll finally push the Astros over 500 in the month of June. They're eight and eight. And down on strikes, LeMahieu. So there's the first out of the ninth inning. That's now 11 strikeouts of Rockies hitters. Josh Fields, I mean, the man wears camo suits on the plane. He loves to go hunting. He just comes after you with good old fashioned country hardball. Not trying to trick anybody here. Just throw the electric heat. Does he wear a tie with those camel suits? I can't tell. <laughs> That's good. Pop fly right side. Carter comes over. Leans in and comes up. Well, he got it. That excitement as he made the catch a little tough to read. Chris Carter just electric with the motions on, on the great play going into the stands. That's a big out. Pop up, you battle the sun, you battle the fans. Watch him exult. Look at this, just pure elation. Knows that's going to end up on a highlight reel, robbing that young Colorado fan of foul ball. 
So nice play by Carter. Two down, bases empty for Carlos Gonzalez. And we're down to that final out. Cargo had that three run home run in the first inning. Gave the Rockies an early 3 1 lead. But he's been quiet since. He's walked, struck out, and grounded out. He's got some amazing information, Ash. Yeah. So if the Astros win, this will be their 40th win? Yes. In 2013, rough season. Drive into right center field, coming on Springer. He'll get there to make the play, and that'll do it. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. August 16th in 2013.